Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Now, this is a bit of a fun one. This video is all about how to get rid of an ear infection that's bacterial or fungal. Now, mine is a bit of a story. This is the reason how this video came about. So, a couple of years ago, I actually had a staph infection on my face. It was a skin infection, but it sort of started here and just worked its way up. Just kept moving along, moving along, moving along. I'd gotten rid of it um, with natural means, so I'll share it in the description below what I did to help heal my skin infection naturally. But it just would keep moving, so it would heal, but then I'd find it somewhere else on my face. And I think it was due to a low immune, a low immune system at the time, because usually your, immune, your body can sort of keep it at bay, but mine wasn't keeping it at bay at the time. Anyway, it eventually moved into my ear. So the stuff actually got inside my ear canal, and it was very irritated, very sore, ended up blocking it. I couldn't hear out of it. So I, I was fighting it naturally up to that point, but once it got inside my ear, I was a bit worried then because I didn't want it to damage my ear and have problems hearing later on. Because your ears are very sensitive, they're like your eyes, you want to take very good care of them. And I was very cautious that I didn't want it to be in there too long because it could, could cause damage. So I went to see a doctor about it, they gave me antibiotics for it, and they gave me an antibiotic topical cream to put on it. And that worked immediately. It was fantastic. Got rid of the staph infection completely. I didn't have a problem with it after that, which was awesome. However, I found that ever since my staph infection in my ear, it would, like, when I went swimming, it would get waterlogged. And I never used to have this problem, even as a kid. My ears, are, like, canals are quite big, so they drain out really easily. But with this one, it was always getting blocked, and it wouldn't drain out properly. Like, I'd have to, like do a lot to try and get the water out and sometimes it just wouldn't come out. I think eventually it just got out itself but it would sit there for ages. Anyway, I started getting irritation with it and my earwax started blocking my ears sometimes so I couldn't actually hear out of it and I was like, oh. I thought it was just an over like earwax problem so I was like, I'll just get like a cotton bud, try and get it out. I was very careful not to push the earwax further in. I was trying to more like scoop around the edges but it wasn't really helping. Then I got a memaki stick, memaki stick, it's like a I got it's like you Japanese utensil. I'll write the word down the bottom because I have not pronounced that right. I'm in my khaki stick, I think that's how you say it, and that is really helpful. It's got like a little kind of spade bit at the end and it just helps to kind of scoop out earwax rather than pushing it in like a cotton bud does. And it's, I got a reusable one so it's more eco friendly. You know me. So I got that and I was scooping out the earwax, but it just wasn't helping, um, like kind of get rid of it. It was sort of really deep in my ear. I didn't want to put the stick too far in because I was like, I don't want to damage my eardrum. So I was just struggling with it. Anyway, beginning of this year, 2020, I was at the beach and I was like, oh, this is just getting worse with all the waterlogged, like getting stuck in my ear and the earwax just keeps building up and I can't get rid of it. It was just very uncomfortable. And so I went to see a doctor again. I try not to see doctors as often. I try not to let my body heal itself, but it wasn't healing itself. So I went to see a doctor and they prescribed me Waxel. They said they couldn't really see any blocks, like earwax blocking my ear, but they gave it to me anyway. And I put the Waxel in my ear, um, it's like a cream, and I let it sit in there and it's supposed to dissolve the earwax, but I think I left it in too long. I don't know how, but because I did it for the amount it said, but I think I left it in too long anyway. And it burnt my ear, like my ear canal, so sore. The earwax was gone, safe to say, but my ear canal was really burnt and red raw and so sore. And so for a week afterwards, it was just really tender, really raw. Oh, it was not nice. Not nice, guys. It was not a great time for me. <laughs> so I put a lot, of, like, I went to the, to the sea and this helped, like, try to get the seawater to heal it. And after a while, it was fine. But I think it, like, the swelling from the staff and just me using wax on my ear kind of shrunk my ear canal a bit with like swelling and inflammation anyway i was starting to have irritation now in my ear like it was itchy and then it was sore and it was like just really irritated and i was like oh, i was trying to wait for it wait it out until it like got better itself because sometimes it can do that but it just wasn't for me so about a month ago i went to see my naturopath and I got her to check my ear, and we found out that I had a fungal and bacterial infection in there. And that was what was causing my irritated ear. And it was a little bit in this one, but it wasn't as much. Anyway, she prescribed me a natural kind of remedy for my ear. And oh my gosh, it worked so well. Best thing ever. So I'll share with you guys what that is today. It's really easy to do, and I did it at the start around 
two to three times a day. On days where my ear was more irritated, I'd do it three times, but when it wasn't so bad, I'd just do it two times a day, morning and night. And it helped me so much. It's been a month now. It's still a little bit there. I can feel it sometimes. But as long as I keep on top of it with this um, remedy, like this eardrop remedy that I make, it's really helpful and it's like really improved my ear tenfold. I've been also making sure not to have too much sugar and to help really with my detoxing. I've also paired it with infrared saunas, which helps with detoxing and you kind of sweat to help um, release de like release toxins. And by doing that, it's helped to also really uh, heal my ear as well. Now, when you do this, you need to do it in both ears because my naturopath said that if you only do it in one ear, like if you only do the ointment in one ear, the infection will just move across because your ears are like linked. So if you just do it in one, the infection most likely will just move to the other ear and then you have it in the other one. So you do them both at the same time and then you block them up with a cotton bud and you leave it in there. And make sure you don't wash out the solution at all. You just let it completely absorb and then take out the ear cotton buds. The cotton buds are just there to help stop the solution running down your face. So. Just leave them in there, don't wash the ointment out at all, let it sink into your skin, and I just do it morning and night. And it's helped me so much. I imagine in a few more months time it's going to be completely gone, so I'm very excited about that. Finally! <laughs> Two years in the making, it's finally getting better. I also have noticed since doing the ointment that my ear canal is actually like less swollen, so it's like bigger now. Which is great. So now when I swim, I can actually like get the water out, which is fantastic. So it's just a win-win overall. Anyway, long story short, this is what I do to help rectify a fungal or bacterial ear infection. So to make these ear drops, you want to start by filling up your egg cup about one to two inches of the way with olive oil. Then place the egg cup containing the olive oil into a bowl and pour boiling water around it in the bowl, making sure to cover the egg cup but not allowing the water to flow over into the olive oil. You just want to heat up the oil inside. Then once the oil is warm, not hot though, you just want it to be warm, you can test a sample on the underside of your wrist where the skin is thin so it can feel the change in temperature much more effectively. So once the oil is warm, take the egg cup out of the water and add in 2-3 to three drops of either chamomile, tea tree or lavender essential oil. I did a bit of tea tree and lavender. Then you want to mix it through, then once that's done, grab your dropper and you're ready to pop it into your ears. Alrighty, so once we have our solution, like so, we're going to drop it into your ears. I usually do one and then leave my head on the side for a couple moments and then I put the cotton bod or cotton ball in and then I do the other side and do the same. Let, my, let it kind of sit in my ear for a little bit and then put the cotton ball in. And then I just go about my daily life. Now, one thing to note is that it's really ideal if you get organic cotton balls because cotton is one of the most is one of the most like pesticide sprayed um, crops that we grow so it's really laden in pesticides and chemicals so putting that in your ear is not great so if you can really opt to get organic cotton and hopefully as if you can as well like ethically and sustainably farmed cotton as well I'm in the process of looking for some at the moment so what I do I'll link in the description below the ones that I get. So basically what we do with the eardrops, like I said before, oh, try not to drop it. Just swap that up in my foot. Nothing to see here. Meg's gonna see this later and be like, you dropped oil in our room? I'm like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Oops. So once you've got a nice little bit of the, just get my hand, of your eardrops, don't mind that, it's just raining outside. It was storming before, so enjoy the pitter patter of the rain. A bit of ASMR going for you guys. And also, don't worry about my eardrop. I was have made many homemade um, DIYs in the past, and one of them just hasn't been able to get properly cleaned out. Like, I've cleaned it as much as possible, but I haven't been able to get all the residue out of it. So that's why it kind of looks really strange. But the eardrop itself is actually quite clean. So... Once you have your eardropper full of, well, once you have your dropper full of the solution, put your ear on the side, your inside, put your head on the side, and then you just drop it in. It's really uncomfortable to start too. It takes a while to get used to it. Well, it still makes me shiver when I get it in my ear. And just put enough in until it's 
um, like blocking your ear so you can feel that it's in there it's all the way down and you can't really hear out of it it's like partially blocked and then I usually break up the cotton ball in two so that it saves on waste because I don't need a whole cotton ball in my ear so I break it in two and then I put one side of it in my ear and just like make sure that it's pressed in nice and firm so it doesn't just pop out later on and there and you can just feel it drain down afterwards which is so nice because it's really uncomfortable having it sitting on your eardrum and then I whoop and then I get the next dose and I put that bit in my ear too yeah <laughs> every time I leave it in there for a moment or two and then block it up with my cotton bud Ta-da! And yeah, you can't really hear much <laughs> out of it afterwards. I must say, it's a look and a half with the cotton buds in your ears, so you can go walk around with that and just go about your daily life. And it's so easy. And it'll just sit and do its thing in your ear, help to kill any bacteria. You can use chamomile, lavender, or tea tree oil, like I said before. Probably not eucalyptus, just because it's a bit more harsh. And your ears are sensitive, like I said, they're like your eyes. You want to protect them, so you don't want to use anything too harsh on them. So just a couple of drops of lavender or tea tree or chamomile, or you can do what I did where I did a bit of lavender and a bit of tea tree and mix that in to the solution. The recipe for this ear infection remedy will be in the description below for you guys if you want to check it out later or refer back to it at a later date. So feel free to check that out. Today's giant shout out goes to Yummy Wishes. Thank you so much for commenting on my keto bread recipe. I'm so glad you liked it. You are most welcome. I'm glad you got a lot out of it. Thank you everyone for watching and for commenting my videos. It really means so much to me. I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you do like make any of the recipes I share in any of my videos, please feel free to tag me on social media, especially on Instagram I am there mostly, mostly, most of the time. So if you do want to have a chat or like message me, I'll most likely get back to you on Instagram. Sometimes I do miss, miss some of your comments on my YouTube videos. Sorry about that. Get lots. So I try and come back, comment back to as many as I can. But I most likely will get back to you on Instagram. So feel free to message me there if you have any questions or in the comments below. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye. Even if I tried, even if I wanted to, and I can't change.